Well, hello, hello. Welcome to this Q&A. Thank you so much. Hi, Suzette. Welcome, welcome. Just don't waste any time. Let's jump right in the questions. So let me move myself, make myself a little bit smaller. All right, discuss. Hi, Joanna. Thank you so much for joining. The first question is from um, Anjali. And Anjali says, hi, I am a new BTC. So yes, that's, um, that's a great question. And I'm going to tell you the systems that I use, you know, every day to help me keep my sanity and help me to, you know, make sure that nothing falls through the cracks because it's super easy, especially transactions at the same time, you know, you need to be very careful and, you know, I don't ever trust my memory. Um, we are humans, we make mistakes, we forget things. So, you know, definitely I relay a lot in a piece of software. In my case is OTC or open to close. And the, oh, I'm sorry. So said said that my screen is reconnecting. Um, not sure if you guys, um, can you confirm if you guys can see my screen? All right, so I hope that everything uh, is good and you guys can see. If not, please uh, let me know in the comments. And again, I'm sorry if there is any type of technical difficulties, but um, anyways, I was telling you about open to close or OTC. So open to close is, um, you know, a subscription based type of, um, I don't know, software is a task management system and is actually what I use in order to, again, manage all the transactions from the beginning to end. And couple of things that I love about open to close is that it's fully, fully customizable. And it really works well for me because I can create many different type of templates and many different type of uh, checklists. Okay, so I have different templates and checklists based on the type of client that I'm servicing. Okay, it's not the same when you service a realtor that when you service, you know, a Invest, an investor, for example. So yes, that is what um, what I use. And another thing that OTC offers that I really like is the automation. So for example, you know that when you are doing TC work, you have to communicate with all the parties, keep everyone informed. And one of the things that um, you know I do and most of the transaction coordinators um, do is to send introduction emails. So every time that you open a file, that you process, you track, once that you put all the information in the system, in my case, in open to close, then you know, you're going to start sending emails uh, to all the parties with relevant information. You're going to send a copy of the contract and you know whatever information is needed, right? And the reality is that in every single transaction, you're going to do the same thing, right? You're always going to send an intro email. And in my case, what I do is I create templates, for example, for that type of emails, and I use the automation that they offer in order to you know, auto-populate certain information that the system is going to take automatically from the information I already enter when I open the file. For example, I have never had to type the subject line on an email template, right? Um, I personally write, uh, for example, in every single email, I start with the address. So that piece of information, I don't have to type it every time that I send an email. If I send an email from the software, from OTC, it's going to automatically you know, populate the address. And for example, if I create the roles, if I know who is you know, the buyer, the seller, etc., and if I assign roles inside of OTC every time that I send an email, using the template, let's say that that template, you know, um, calls for, you know, an email to be sent to the buyer, then the buyer is going to, you know, 
be automatically added to that email. I don't have to select, you know, or add the email address. And also the name of the buyer is going to be after the hello name is going to autofill, um, you know, from the information that I enter already. So that is again, um, the system, the software um, that I use in order to manage the tasks. It's a task management system. Another thing that I do is I use, um, well, different tools, like for example, DocuSign or Dotloop. I actually use both. And those are two for uh, electronic signature. So, um, but pretty much, yeah, I think that in my case is uh, open to close what helps me to, you know, monitor all the um, tasks that I have on the checklist. So um, thank you, Anjali, and I hope that that helps. All right, perfect. So let's uh, go to the next question that we have for today. And that is from Suzette, and it says, Hi, Cecilia, there are several questions. With the virtual business, how do you receive checks and documents? All right, Suzette, that is a great question. When, um, and, and I guess that, you know, you said, because we are virtual um, businesses, your concern is how you will receive the checks and the documents. Okay, so for the documents, let's start with that. For the most part, um, everyone is using electronic signatures, right? So let's say that we have an agent, a realtor that we are servicing, and that realtor went to an appointment, right? And actually brought like a paper um, version of either a listing agreement or a purchase contract, right? Whatever the transaction he might be uh, getting at that point. So let's say that he got the signatures in person. So that agent will have to scan the um, documents and send the documents to us by email. Now, Nowadays, most of the most of the times, um, they send these documents electronically. Okay, listing agreements and purchase uh, agreements, etc. So everything, for the most part, is signed electronically. Once that the um, document is signed, they just download it and they send it to to me or to any you know TC by email. Now. In certain, you know, situations, you might have people, and most likely I'm not talking about realtors, but um, the client's client, meaning the buyer or the seller, that for whatever reason, they don't um, have access to emails or they don't have a computer or maybe they are not uh, using a cell phone. It could be that they are like, um, you know, elderly or whatever the case might be and they are not very used to this type of technology in this case we can always work with the um, realtor when they need to send copies you know of these documents to the clients and we go case by case but um, there are services out there where you can hire for them to print and deliver um, hard copies of these documents but um, honestly it is you know, it is uh, not very, very uh, common, not very frequent that we have to send hard copies. All right. And the other part of the question was about checks. All right. So, yes, um, a lot of times I get paid by check. And if that is the case, the title company is actually mailing me a check um, after closing. OK, so I receive checks by regular mail or I said regular, but sometimes they overnight it for me. It depends on the title company. And the other option that some of the title companies offer is instead of sending you the checks um, by mail, they might offer you to wire you the funds. Okay, so that is another, another option in order to receive the payment. Okay. All right. So um, thank you, Suzette. I think that we have more questions from you, but let me know if you have any follow-up questions in regards of the documents or the checks, okay? So we are going to move uh, to you to the next question. 
The next question is from Joanna, which I believe that Joanna is also live in the stream. So thank you for being here. So Joanna said, um, how soon do you follow up on documents to the other agent for the seller or buyer to sign a document or anything else pending? If I email it on Monday afternoon, can I follow up Tuesday morning or is that too soon? I ask because I feel like I may send more emails than I should or I could get annoying. <laughs> Maybe I should wait two days, but then I feel like I'm staying on top of it. Sorry, this is long. No, that's great. Thank you, Joanna. And first of all, uh, let me uh, welcome David. Oh my gosh, David. I love David. He is... Oh... Jesus, he is the best of the best in this uh, transaction coordination business. Okay, guys, so if you are not uh, following David, make sure you do so because you're going to learn a lot. So thank you, David, for being here. All right, so Joanna, <laughs> I love your question. And I think that we all um, probably kind of feel the same way at some point. At least I know that I do when I, you know, I don't know, think that uh, I want to be on top of things, but at the same time, I don't want to come across super pushy or, you know, in a way that, you know, kind of make people feel like uh, I am too intense, right? So the way that I do things is I try to also read my audience, right? I'm trying to understand who I am dealing with, okay? So, um I don't know if I have like an exact answer for you to tell you, okay, you're okay following up, you know, after 24 hours. So hour 25, you're good. If not, you're totally annoying. I don't want to say that, right? Um, because unfortunately I have to tell you that it's kind of case by case. So for example, what I'm trying to say is, let's say that you are waiting for a document that is time sensitive. And also, I understand that every single document that is pending is super important. But sometimes, sometimes, if you're at the beginning of the transaction and let's say you are missing an initial on the lead-based pain disclosure, okay, it's super important for compliance. Absolutely, you might not be able to, you know, get a file approval without it. And we all know that is extremely important, but is it going to prevent you to, I don't know, continue with the transaction or is it going to put, I don't know, the buyer's agent um, or the buyer's escrow, I'm sorry, at risk? No. So in that case, I guess that I pick and choose my battles, right? If you send it on Monday afternoon, at least I'm going to give them 24 hours, right? Now, if you're dealing with, let's say, I don't know, Today is Monday and tomorrow, Tuesday is the end of the inspection period and you need to get the signatures for the addendum where you have the terms uh, for, you know, repairs or credits, whatever that might be. Then absolutely be on top of that. I would be sending the email on Tuesday. Oh, I'm sorry, Monday afternoon. I will follow up the email with a text message to either the other realtor, the other side or the other TC, and definitely I'm going to follow up first thing in the morning on Tuesday um, as soon as I open the office. So I guess that is case by case. Again, if you're if you have enough time, I will as a courtesy probably give them 24 hours. Now, if you also know that this other side, you know, is normally lagging a little bit and they are not super good at responding, then, you know, I wouldn't feel so bad about, you know, insisting, insisting, insisting. But don't just, um, don't just send an email. What I would recommend is that if you feel like you might be perceived as you are kind of too pushy, too intense, too on top of things, just grab the phone Give them a, a call and, you know, when you talk to them, like over the phone, 
you might be able to come across in a different way. You might be able to explain what you call. You might be able to kind of establish a you know, better report. So I hope that that helps. Um, let me know if you have any follow-up questions on that. Okay, perfect. So let's go to the next one. Oh, <laughs> so said, I love that question. Do you recommend using your personal phone with a start of business or getting a phone? Is that recommended? Okay, so <laughs> I think that tomorrow I'm going to be publishing um, a new video where I talk about um, boundaries. And I'm sorry, David, I know you hate that word. <laughs> So, um, but I put boundaries because everyone understand, you know, the war in, and so they will understand what I'm, what, I, what the video is about. And on that video, I'm going to be, you know, giving you a little bit um, of a story about, um, you know, a, a client that that was like, you know, texting me super late when I when I used to be a realtor. And the reality is that. I don't recommend to use your personal phone ever. Now, I made that mistake when I was a realtor. I have my cell phone. I, you know, was using that for business. And I don't know. I think that I, I fixed that later, right? Now, um, I kind of have two different phones. And when I said two different phones, I, I only have one physical phone, but I have two different lines. OK, because the reality is that you need to be able to separate personal from business, in my opinion. And that is going to be super beneficial because when you have separation, you can just shut it down after whatever time you finish working. Let's say in my case, I finish working at 530 p.m. So after that time, I don't answer you know, any calls, any texts, and I don't check my emails. So if I do have my personal cell phone as, you know, the main point of contact for my business, then, you know, people will, will text you, will email you, will call you after hours. And that is not because they don't respect you. They, I don't know, they don't want to, to rest. They don't want to have peace. They just, you know, want to give you instructions for the next day. And they're still working. It's late and they're working. So they just go to leave a message. But if you have your notifications in your personal phone and you're having dinner with your family or you are in bed or you are watching a movie, you are going to see the notification. So I don't like that. So personally, I totally, um, you know, recommend that you have a second uh, a second number now i don't say that you have to buy a second phone okay and there are many different services out there that you can utilize in order to to achieve that for example the easiest and cheapest one is google voice you don't need a second phone you can use it in your computer and you can disable the notifications in your cell phone so after hours you know you don't need to even see that. Another uh, service um, that you might want to consider is Ring Central. Okay, is 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 great, and you know you can have different numbers um, as well. I mean, like not just one Google Voice. I think that it gives you one. In Ring Central, you know you can have like many different lines. Anyways, that is my take on that. Um, obviously, everyone might have a different approach, so I just tell you what works for me. All right. Okay, perfect, perfect. So let me see. Okay, so another question that we have um, from Suzette is, what are the different systems you need to put in place when you're about to start a TC business? Okay. All right. So when you said systems, um, I'm pretty sure that you probably talk about softwares. Um, but regardless, I'm going to give you like a little bit of a, a broad answer and you put in the chat, you know, any comments that you have or any follow up questions. Okay. 
So the different systems. When you um, are about to start a TC business, and I love that you said business, okay, because definitely is what it is, right? When you are independent, you will have to manage a business. It's not that you only have to learn how to do TC tasks. You also have to do everything else that has to do with, you know, running a business, Okay, so obviously, you know, a couple of things that you will have to start, um, you know, thinking about and putting in place. One of the things is how you're going to communicate, right? So your phone in this case, you will have to have a dedicated line for your clients. Now, um, when it comes to communication, obviously, you know, you will have to have a dedicated email. Personally, I prefer if you do have like a domain right? And you have a branded email. Now, is it absolutely necessary? No, but I think that it looks more professional. Um, You might decide to create a website. A lot of people, you know, create a website and, you know, have everything in clear, like what are the services they offer, what is included in their services, and the prices. And not just that, but normally they do have as well some type of um, submission um, button where the realtors or investors, whatever, they can just click on it and upload the documents that are sending you along with completing some type of intake form, which is going to, you know, um, grab all the necessary information from them. Okay. So that will be one of the aspects one of the system that you have to kind of take care of. Another thing is obviously, um, on the um, legal side, right? If you are a business, you will have to make a decision. And obviously I recommend that you go and visit your attorney or your accountant and make sure that you get, you know, professional advice on that. But you might have to decide if you're going to operate as an LLC, for example, or as a sole proprietor. And uh, you will have to, you know, create based on, you know, what type of uh, advice you get from these professionals, you will have to probably, I don't know, file for um, the LSC, um, an EIN number. You also have to um, open a bank account for your business and make sure that you keep everything separated, right? And not just that, but you're also going to have to do bookkeeping, you will have to have in place a system for you to be able to um, have every month, at least every month, you know, your accounts reconciled in all the expenses categorized. So you could use, I don't know, QuickBooks, um, you could use Wave. I personally use QuickBooks. I never use Wave, but I hear that it's free and, you know, a lot of TCs, Uh, use way for invoicing and for uh, accounting or bookkeeping, okay? So another thing related to that is once that you meet with your accountant, make sure that you understand how taxes work, okay? Because you will also have to have a system in place for you to, you know, set aside money for your taxes because when you are independent, you are going to be responsible for that. And you don't want any surprises when at the end of the um, quarter or at the end of the year, you need to um, pay taxes and you didn't, you know, account for that. So uh, make sure that you have all these, you know, uh, in place from the very beginning. Okay. So you create habits. You have systems that you follow. Um, Another system that you will have to have in place has to be, you know, with the, um, with the actual uh, TC task, right? How are you going to manage your transactions? Personally, as I was mentioning before, I use Open to Close. I use that for my task management system. I trust Open to Close, literally, like my life depends on that because I think it does. I wouldn't be able to manage transactions if I had to, you know, trust my memory as we discussed two minutes ago. So that is another thing that you have to absolutely develop 
hopefully prior you start you know servicing clients so you reduce a lot the possibilities of making mistakes and to forget things so that is another aspect that is super important but it's not just that remember you're a business owner and you have to do everything to run your business and if you don't do it you will have to hire right for someone to do that for you so another aspect of running a business is marketing and sales okay so to me there are two different things okay marketing is when you know you promote yourself but sales is when you actually close the deal all right and definitely you know because you are not an employee you are now an independent dc having a dc business you will have to make sure that you always have your sales pipeline full you know you need to market even when you are booked that is what the experts said and i totally agree with that um so those are the the systems it's a very very broad overview of course um that you will need in place in order to run a tc business and another thing that i totally forgot and i'm sorry so let me add to that you will have to have some type of customer service system in place as well okay because don't forget that you need to keep your customers or clients whatever you want to call it satisfied and not just that i mean like you need to understand what is going on you need to touch bases regularly um so those are the things that you definitely will have to think about and have in place if you are running your own business and if i forget something please guys feel free to you know uh, participate and let me know or if you have any um follow-up questions okay perfect so you have already an llc that's great awesome awesome okay let's move on do i have another one yes all right, let me check. David says, I have to jump off um, for a coaching call, but totally looking forward to coming back to watch the replay. Thanks. Great job. Thank you, David. See you later. Thanks so much. All right. So would you recommend a new TC going to open houses, investor seminars, and real estate gatherings? And where do I find these places? Yeah, definitely a great, um, great question um, to say. And that is something that, um, you know, a lot of uh, TCs are, you know, curious about or concerns because clearly you need to, as we discussed before, you need to find clients somehow, right? You always have to promote yourself and bring new clients to your business. So in this case, you are asking in particular about open houses investor seminars and real estate gatherings okay so yes for places to find them i definitely believe that if you're going to um go out and and, and network and and create relationships and things like that um personally i think that open houses are great because you know you get to talk to the agents and um, you get to create a little bit of a relationship because you are visiting them on site, right? So you get the chance to, you know, spend some time with them. And in some cases, in some cases, not always, but if you come to the right place at the right time, maybe the open house is empty at that point. Okay, so there are no buyers visiting and you have a great chance to have a nice conversation and create some type of rapport with that agent. Okay, so yeah, that is great. And you can find, you know, open houses um, in Zillow, right? So for investor seminars and real estate gatherings. Okay, for investor seminars, I think that those are great places where you can network, okay? Now, I will I will ask you first a question. Are you super confident about being able to serve investors? Do you understand how an investor conducts business and what type of strategies they use in order to acquire properties? Because if you are not really familiar with what they're doing, 
then you know you might put yourself in a situation where you are trying to promote your services or sell your services and you might not be able to fully help them as a DC if you are not fully aware of what they're doing, if you don't understand the, invest the investment work, okay? So if you're going to go after investors, just a recommendation, make sure that you speak their language, make sure that you understand all the type of creative um, strategies they use before you go and jump and offer your services, okay? And um, all right, so Suzette said um, that is a big no, but I'm willing to learn. Okay, so absolutely, that's that's wonderful. If you're willing to learn, um, you can probably do both at the same time, right? If you go to an investor seminar, most likely you're going to gather a lot of information and at the same time, you're going to be able to mingle with, you know, investors. That's great. So um, real estate gatherings and so, okay, for the real estate gatherings, uh, you know, it's very common that um, real estate agents participate of events, okay? They love to mingle, they love to network, and normally um, either lenders, title companies, sometimes even home inspectors, they actually put together these events for the realtors, okay? So I wouldn't just limit, you know, your your reach to the realtors. I will also, you know, develop relationships in the industry with other service providers that might be the ones who actually put together this event. If not, you can always go as well to uh, Meetup. It's, um, it's an app, it's a website where you can find different events in your city. And a lot of times they put networking events uh, for investors and for realtors as well. Um, in particular for investors, if you're looking for seminars or, you know, to, to also get these, um, I don't know, meetings where you can get information and at the same time do networking, I will check on your local RIA, the Real Estate Investors Associations. Um, most of big cities in the country have RIAs. Uh, so go ahead and take a look. You know, sometimes they require um, a membership. Normally they are not super expensive, okay? So you can either pay the membership and attend every single meeting. Sometimes they call it chapters that they have. Um, and in some cases, at least uh, that used to be the case here in Orlando, they used to have um, monthly events where you can just access to the main monthly meeting paying like something like $10, okay? So um, yeah, those are the places uh, where you can find this type of event, okay? So let me know if that helps. Okay, so um, so far I don't have any questions, uh, but I wanted to make sure that I give you guys um, the opportunity to ask anything live, if anything that you, or any follow up questions, anything that I probably missed. And also, I wanted to, you know, I believe that Suzette also. Um, putting one of the comments uh, during the week, I mean, I think that it was yesterday, that she wanted to know about banks, what type of bank, you know, you can, you know, choose for your business. So as you said, I cannot really give you a recommendation because I haven't tried, you know, many different banks, so it wouldn't, you know, be like uh, something good on my part to do. However, what I can tell you is that in order for you to decide which bank you will use, just spend a little bit of time and research on what they offer. Like, for example, it is very common that, at least for me in my business, I receive either checks or wires as part of payment from the title company. Okay. So, to me, what is one of the things that is no negotiable, okay? is to have um, mobile deposit, meaning 
meaning that I can take a photo of the check and deposit it that way. And another thing that is non-negotiable is to um, don't be charged a fee when I receive a wire. Believe it or not, there are banks, I know for experience, that they charge you when you deposit money by wire, you know, which is to me is totally crazy. So um, to me, those things are super important on top of others, right? But um, it will depend on, you know, your own business. It will depend on what is important for you. So keep at least these two things in mind when trying to, you know, um, search for the best option. Those are just a couple of tips. Okay. All right. And so it says the name of the site, uh, Meetup. Meetup, Meetup. Uh, let me see if I can put it in here and put um, screen. Yeah, Meetup, uh, I don't know if that is uh, the one that you're asking, um, Suzette, but what I mentioned was uh, Meetup to find events, if that is what you would like to do in order to, you know, um, get clients or network, okay? And the other thing that I mentioned is uh, RIAs, Real Estate Investment Associations. So, yeah. Let me know if that is uh, what you were um, asking, but I'm going to actually put it here. Meet up. And the other one is Rias. Okay, I just put it on the comments so you can, um, you know, check them out. Just do a little bit of a research. And yeah, those are, those are good uh, places to start with. Okay, if that is the the way that you would like to go with your networking, okay? All right, so any other questions before we, you know, end up the, the live today? Anything else that you guys would like to know? Okay, perfect. So I don't think that I have any other questions, but in the meantime, what I'm going to also let you know is that, um, you know, last week, what I did is I, I mean, last week and this week, I was interviewing a lot of you that were so nice to uh, participate of this product research that I'm doing. So I still going to be interviewing people this week until probably Tuesday or Wednesday next week. So if you still want to participate, um, just make sure you scan the QR code and you fill out the form so I can get in touch with you and we can have a little chat. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. So I think that that's it. I don't see any more questions. Thank you so much for participating, for, um, showing up in the, in the live stream. I love it. And let me, um, let me any questions for next week in the comments, I make sure that I answer them all. Okay. All right. So thank you so much again for participating and I will see you around. Thank you. Bye-bye.